Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mackenzie, I'm a stained glass artist and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to cut stained glass as well as going over all the tools you're going to need and how to use them. Today's video is going to be a bit lengthy so let's just jump right into cutting these two designs here. As you can see I've already made both my stencils, I've drawn and cut them out. So I'm just going to start tracing all my pieces. I use just a regular black sharpie, it works the best and it sticks to the glass even through the wet grinding process which I'll show you in my next video. So I'm just going to speed through this simple tracing process. Okay, so I'm going to have all my tools linked below, but let's just quickly go over each one and what they're used for. So first we have our most important piece and it's going to be our glass cutter. There are a few different types of glass cutters, but the one I like to use and what's shown here is called the pencil grip. The little tiny wheel at the tip is actually what makes the magic happen. That tiny wheel is what scores the glass. Why they're called glass cutters, I'm not sure. They don't cut glass at all, they score it and then we have to break it. But that's besides the point, it's a glass cutter. Next up we have running pliers. Or Having a nice set of these is really important. They have an adjustable curved mouth like these ones and are perfect for snapping glass along your already cut or scored line. This little screw back here can open or close your tip depending on how thick your glass is or just preference. They also have replaceable rubber tips to protect your glass from what would be metal to glass contact so you don't break it. And last and absolutely least, we have nippers. These little pliers can be used to aggressively nip off chunks of glass if for some reason you like shooting glass particles across your entire house. I hate those and never use them. So here's not a tool, but it is something you absolutely need if you plan on making anything glass cutting oil. This oil with the actual cutting wheel on your glass cutter is what scores the glass, allowing us to then break it where we need. Without the oil, the score would never be deep enough and your glass won't break along that line and your glass cutting wheel will dull itself in no time. So just like my soldering flux, I like to use this little jar to put my oil inside of and in the bottom of that jar I have a little cotton ball to help soak up the cutting oil so when I do dip my cutter inside it's not going to be dripping and making a mess. So now we can actually start cutting. I'm just going to dip my glass cutter in, wiping off any excess oil on the sides and making sure that that little tiny wheel is completely coated. So I'm going to hold my glass cutter in the most comfortable position for me. I hold it just like a pencil and I'm going to apply very, very light pressure while pushing forward, moving along my pre-traced guideline. So because you can't break glass in 90 degrees or really sharp angles, you have to strategically plan out where you can make your initial breaks to separate all of your pieces. Obviously you want to save as much glass as possible, but sometimes your shapes and patterns just don't match up or like here, you need to use certain sections of glass for the pattern or the actual iridescence of the glass. So you can see my first two cuts were made separating my glass into what will be two main chunks. So now I'm just going in to score or cut any areas I can before I separate anything. You need to keep an eye on every score you've made as to not overlap and disrupt the integrity of that specific score line that you already did. So it's really hard to say exactly how much pressure you're applying as you're cutting or scoring the glass but it's just a matter of practice. It makes a very specific sound as well as feel. You can feel it scoring the glass as you push your cutter along. But just like with anything else, it's practice and trial and error. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it and the better you're going to understand what you can and can't do with the glass. So I'm just finishing up these last cuts that I can put in before I start breaking anything and I want to give you a closer look at the actual cutting wheel that's on the tip of this. So that little tiny wheel is what scores the glass and it's not sharp to the touch at all. You could roll it as hard as you want it across your hand and it will not cut. But for some reason that little metal wheel with oil on glass scores it just enough so when we pinch it with our gozers it breaks apart. So before I can make any more cuts, I need to separate as much as I can to get everything out of the way and concentrate on cutting all the individual shapes out. 
So I just checked the space on my running pliers. Now I'm going to find my first two main scores so we can snap them. It just takes a little bit of pressure with the curved jaw on the bottom of my glass. And I'm lining up my score line with the exact center of my pliers. A lot of pliers do have a center line to match up with. These ones just don't happen to have them. So I'm just lightly squeezing on each end of my score line until I feel and hear the initial crack. And you can feel the glass release. And it's as easy as that, it just breaks. So same thing here, I'm just gonna squeeze each end of my score line until I feel each side crack and release open. So you can see that this does have a little bit of a curve to it, but that's why I'm gently going back and forth, back and forth, squeezing each end until it breaks easily. So this piece here does have quite a bit of a curve to it, so it's giving me a little trouble. And I don't feel confident because I don't hear and feel that snap release right before it breaks. So instead of using the gozers or running pliers, I'm going to use the back of my glass cutter. In the back of your glass cutter, there's this big heavy metal ball that's used for tapping. So I'm going right underneath the glass, right where my score line is, and gently tapping all along that cut. So just back and forth giving it a good smack too. It's gonna to be loud, but that breaks it apart. So I don't know if you remember hearing me say earlier that your running pliers or gozers can have a replaceable tip, but I just wanna show you what can happen over time. It does, sometimes that happens faster than others, just like with the soldering iron, you get what you pay for. And right here, when I'm using the corner of these gozers as little pliers to rip off the end I think is what does the damage so I'm just gonna zoom in and show you what it looks like but you can buy replacements so it's okay the actual plastic begins to break apart right at that seam and open up and you can see right at that contact point that little plastic piece will begin to split open but you can get cheap replacements for it and they just easily slide on and off. Okay, so now that I've shown you the ways that I like to break apart my glass, I'm just gonna speed through the rest of cutting and breaking these stencils. Okay, so I wanted to slow the camera down really quick so I could show you why I colored in these areas in Sharpie. As I mentioned earlier, you cannot cut out a 90 degree or super deep angle with glass. So right here behind his ear in the area on his mouth, it's going to need a very deep in curve. So I just colored those in with Sharpie. And then when I get to the glass grinder, I'm going to just grind those areas out. So stay tuned for my next video. I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about glass grinding. Okay, so as I'm getting ready to cut these next few pieces, I just wanted to quickly mention a few things about types of glass and textures. So, as I said, everything gets better with practice and you will understand what you can and can't do the more you work with glass. Every single type of glass, every texture of glass cuts differently, breaks differently, and even the temperature of the room you're in can affect that as well. 
So right here I'm working with an extremely textured, wrinkly, almost glass, but one side is smooth. So because of that, I'm flipping it upside down and I'm going to cut that smooth side. So I need to flip my stencils over. So when I do have my pieces cut out, I can flip them right side up and have that textured side facing out and facing the right way. I'm not sure if you're able to see with this hyperlapse, but every so often I'm re-dipping my cutter back into my oil to make sure it's always coated. There are glass cutters that will distribute oil for you, but I find they don't have good control and they end up just dumping oil out everywhere, so I like to use these. So as you just saw, I just carefully swept away all my broken pieces that I just cut off. And I want to stress, every single time you put a fresh piece of glass back down on your cutting mat, you need to make sure every broken piece and shard underneath it is swept away. Even the tiniest little piece can crack a new piece of glass as soon as you put it on top and put any amount of pressure on it. So you want to make sure every time you put a new piece down or every time you're tracing something, everything is fully and carefully swept away. Okay guys, same thing here again. I just traced out all my pieces, going in with my glass cutter after I dipped it in some fresh oil, and going over all my pre-traced lines. Now going in with my gozers and snapping apart all my pieces or tapping away any deeper curves that I can't use my gozers for. So I think that is it for this glass cutting video. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I'm always around to answer them. In my next video, I'm going to be grinding these two pieces, so I'll show you how to get rid of all those ugly gaps and sharp edges so our pieces will perfectly fit together. If you like this kind of content, in my description box, I'm going to link my Etsy, all the tools I've used, and also my Instagram, so check that out if you're interested. And if not, I'll see you in my next video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.